Hello, I'm Juan Davies, Chief Creative Officer at KCT and PBS SoCal, and I'm joined by the newsroom of KPCC and LAist on a daily reporter roundup. How is everyone? Good, Good thanks. David, today we saw some enormous unemployment claim numbers. What have you found out? Right. I mean, so far, more than 2 million Californians have lost their jobs, and we're getting those numbers from new data on unemployment filings out of the U.S. Department of Labor. Uh, this data is showing that more than 925,000 Californians filed for unemployment in the week ending April 4th, and that's on top of more than a million people who filed the week before. These numbers are just really unprecedented. So the figure from the latest week is actually more than eight times higher than the previous record for filings in a single week. That was set back during the Great Recession. California officials say that they're doing their best to keep up with the avalanche of new claims. They've redirected about 850 staffers to processing applications, but they're still working on setting up a filing process for self-employed workers. And there's a lot of freelancers out there that are getting kind of frustrated. Another thing our newsroom has been watching is just testing and testing for coronavirus and whether or not people have been exposed, whether or not they have it. It's been also frustrating for people looking for those tests up till now. More testing is coming online. But Eric wrote about his own experience trying to get a test. Yeah, actually, I was, I was able to finally get a test this week after several weeks of having symptoms and being diagnosed by my doctor as possibly having coronavirus. But thanks to the fact that LA has been bending the curve, California has been bending the curve, and the fact that this, the county has secured enough testing so that anyone with symptoms can get tested, I was able to go get a test yesterday, actually. And it's very dystopian, like, <laughs> of an experience. You drive up through this, like, DMV obstacle course, and they give you a bag with a test. Someone in a hazmat suit gives you a bag. You sit in your car and you swab the inside of your cheeks and the roof of your mouth and you put it into a tube. You shake up the tube, put it in a bag and then dump it in a garbage bin. And then I guess once that garbage bin gets filled up, they sent it off to test the samples. And so now I wait in a couple of days and find out if I actually have coronavirus. Uh, and even though it hasn't hit me hard, I, I'd like to know if I've developed the antibodies and if anyone in my house needs to get tested. Another thing we've talked about in the reporter roundup is the, the crisis is putting a ton of pressure on families and children with developmental disabilities. That's something Robert has been following. Yeah, I, I talked with a, a pediatric neurologist who said that um, because so many services like life skills training, um, therapy, other things have been frozen or moved online, kids with developmental disabilities are really, she said, untethered right now. She was especially worried about parents, too, who are now trying to juggle making a living and caring for their special needs kids. Um, I also spoke with a woman who she and her two kids uh, have autism. She said not having any sort of light at the end of the tunnel right now was, was especially hard for her family and for um, you know, people who are on the spectrum. I also heard from a doctor uh, that some families are fearful of bringing their developmentally disabled kids um, to emergency rooms, to the hospital right now. There was one account of, of a kid having a seizure at home, but their parents decided not to bring them to the hospital because they were worried their kid would, would get sick with coronavirus. On the lighter side, we've also been talking about in this world where we're all being encouraged to wear masks. And tomorrow in LA, when we go shopping, we need to wear masks. Sharon's been looking at how we say hello to each other and smile behind the covering. That's right. People can't always see your face. And even though Adrian says she does the big smiles, you know, smile with your eyes. You know, I wear glasses. Sometimes people can't really tell if I'm smiling or not. So I was asking people, okay, how are you smiling and saying hi if we can't see your face? So I got these responses. Um, we've got the namaste, thank you hands, uh, finger guns, hey, 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 um, closed hand to the chest, thumbs up, solidarity fist, rock and roll, you know, the Hawaiian shaka, it's all okay. I think by the time we can to come to the end of all this, uh, we're going to have lots more ways to say hello, neighbor, I care, here in Los Angeles. Well, thank you all, the KPCC and LA East uh, newsroom, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, be safe, take care of your families, and we will see you tomorrow.